أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا وقائدنا محمد بن عبد الله النبي الأمي الكريم وعلى آل بيته الطاهرين وصحبه الميامين والتابعين وتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم واجعلنا منهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب Dear brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us and blessed us with Jum'ah Yawm al-Jum'ah is our Eid and it is an important day for all Muslims. It is the day we deliver the state of the Ummah. As you know, in Jum'ah, it is far for all of us. You have to listen to the khutbah, and it is before the Salah. Although the Eid is much more people in there, the Prophet وسلم, gave the khutbah an option for people to listen. Although it is only once a year or twice a year, but he gave permission that you didn't even have to listen to the khutbah in Eid. But in Jum'ah, is the main function for Muslims. And you have to pay attention to the Jum'ah. If you touch anything, man masal hasa faqad laha. You touch your phone, you touch your watch, you touch your ring, you keep busy with something else other than the khutbah, you lose it. That's how it is important that Jum'ah is for Muslims. And in Jum'ah, the Prophet وسلم, discussed a various types of issues and topics. Because this deen is comprehensive. This deen is to educate, to inform, to mobilize the Muslim woman. He talks about spiritual, social, economic, political, domestic and foreign relations, business transactions, riba, inheritance, family matters, all from the pulpit to educate the Muslims. Because this is what our deen is, comprehensive. And today, brothers and sisters, I'm here to address with you two topics. And I hope I will be able to do those within the time allocated. The first one is the state of the Ummah. And the other one is the state of the community. It is unfortunate that the state of the Ummah is not a pleasant one. The state of the Ummah, in today, we are at the bottom. I hope it is about as bad as it goes. We are in an era, I call it, the Andalusian era, where Muslims fighting each other. Although they are rich, very rich, very resourceful, many in numbers, but this is what happened in Andalusia. They lost it. They used their enemies against each other. Is that what we see today? Isn't that what we see today? Look at the entire Muslim Ummah. 
especially the Middle East. Has been there any one country saved from this chaos that we are in? It is unfortunate that this state, brothers and sisters, has encouraged others to attack Muslims. That's where we have the rise of Islamophobia. We see it first in Bosnia, then India, and we have it also in the Rohingya, and the Uyghurs, and the list goes on and on. Muslim women in India been auctioned. Our massage has been burned. It is needless to say how many more Muslims have been killed everywhere. While the Islamophobes in India killing Muslims, Satans of Arabia give honor medals to Moody, who has been banned in this country from coming because of their vicious, undemocratic, terror-based policies. Only when he became a prime minister was allowed to come. All that with Muslims watching. Those rogue regimes give money and honor and awards to the killers of Muslims. That's the state of the Ummah. Billions and trillions of dollars are spent on unnecessary wars. You've seen the first war we've seen between Iraq and Iran. And when that has been done with more than a million people died, then they turn against Iraq. And more and more millions and billions of dollars have been spent. Everybody to secure their seat on the expense of the people. As if the resources of the Ummah is absolutely and exclusively theirs. And what do we have? None of them is secure. None of them is safe. If that collective money was spent on the people to make it prosperous, they would all have been still sitting on their seats, but with respect and a gratitude from the people. But when you have an evil intention, it turns against you. Brothers and sisters, it is not surprising to see this chaos. It was a stunning declaration by a four-star general, Whiskey Clark, Way back then, in 2009, when he said at the Commonwealth Club that his superiors told him that we are going to mess up the Middle East. We're going to destroy the Middle East. This is not conspiracy theory. This is on YouTube. You can go ahead and listen. I give you facts that you can check. That was in 2009. Got our country involved in absurd war. According to the Brown University, about $20 trillion the U.S. taxpayers' money spent on unnecessary, non-productive, non-yielding results wars. About a million people died. 4,488 U.S. servicemen and more than 3,400 those contractors also died. And we left the area in a mess. That's the U.S. numbers. Can you imagine what happened to Iraq? Can you imagine what happened to Afghanistan? Can you imagine what is happening right now in Yemen, the poorest country in the Arab world?
attacked by the two richest countries in the Arab world. What do they get? Nothing. The Guardian said, this was in 2019, 100,000 people in Yemen died. In 2019, we are in 2022, and the war is still going on. You can imagine how much this poor country and those poor people have been suffering. They estimated $100 billion Saudi Arabia spent on this absurd war. Who is benefiting? Obviously the sellers. Brothers and sisters, it is also stunning and sad to see Islamophobia rise in the United States and Europe and everywhere financed, encouraged, supported by Satan's of Arabia. Those countries have paid money to institutions claim to be monitoring Muslims. Nothing but to undermine the presence of Muslims in this country. They have encouraged Europe to close the Masjid and to attack Muslims and to deprive Muslims and to label Muslims our own. Not the Islamophobes. That's how Islamophobes became Islamophobes. Unfortunately, the picture and the state of the Ummah is not a pleasant one. But we have faith. We have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this will change the minute we change. In Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. When we have the izzah, when we have the clear vision, when we have the determination, when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us something, if we really take a look at it and practice it, we would be ahead and the leading ummah in the entire world. Where is it today? Obviously something wrong with us. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts, to lighten our road and to bring the best of us to lead this ummah. Brothers and sisters, I want to talk now about the state of the community. The Muslim community in America is truly facing challenges. As I said, the rise of Islamophobia is not only in India, in Myanmar, in China, in Europe, but also in the United States of America. And I mentioned briefly that it is also financed by our own. That means, as a Muslim community in America, we have to stand up for ourselves. We are good citizens. We have contributed our best in this country. And we love this country. We should be the guardians of the Constitution. Of the United States Constitution. Because it protects our rights and everyone else's right. We live in a country that is a nation of immigrants. That we are not alone in this country. And people come from different walks of life. We have to make sure that everyone is protected. Sometimes we are attacked. 
Sometimes we are wrongfully accused. But at least we have a course of action that we can take. We will not relent in any matter and we will continue to defend our rights in this country. The Muslim community is an amazing community. Brothers and sisters, you are, you are awesome. The numbers that we have in this country are astounding. According to the Washington Post, the Muslim community is the most generous community. We have contributed $4.3 billion in 2020 alone. These numbers you may not know about yourself. Although we are only, according to the Pew Research, 1.1% of the population, we could dispute that, maybe more. But we, even with that, the average donation of a person, of a Muslim, is $3,200 a year. When you compare it to $1,900 of non-Muslims in America, you should be proud of yourself. You should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are a great community that nobody knows much about how much we give, how much we contribute in every walks of life. Brothers and sisters, we spend about 8.5% on just domestic violence versus 5.3% of the society. We do care. Almost 84% of what we spend in 2020 went on local activities and projects. My message in Chicago, and I'm present in there and I speak out of authority. Just the last 10 years, we spent $21 million in charity. That's the good heart of our community. I'm sure you are no less than that. Brothers and sisters, to survive in this country, we need to be united. We need to be together. We need to turn down those barriers of Arab and non-Arab, Palestinian and Syrian, and this and that. This is the label of Jahiliya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an honor of being brothers and sisters. We have to be united. The good news that the leadership of the Muslim community did not sit idle. Since 2010, we've been looking at something to bring the Muslim leadership together. Because there is power in unity and strength in numbers. For two years, we had retreats until 2013. The major national Muslim organizations got together and we formed in 2013, the United States Council of Muslim Organizations. That included, as founding members, AMB, CARE, ECNA, MAS, MLFA, MUNA, Imam, Ministry of Imam Warthin Deen Muhammad, IANA, the local councils in Chicago, New York, California, Arizona, and the Northwest Pacifics and local masajid and we have almost all the relief organizations all in the one council that start to challenge and start to provide the information to our government that the Muslim community here to be respected. We have amplified the voice of Muslims. We have brought Government officials challenged them on their foreign policies. We met with ambassadors of foreign countries, challenged them on the policies that they have conducted overseas. We have met with Department of Homeland Security, 
and we have shared with them how important our work in this country, that the, the majority, if not all of these unacceptable, violent events and terrorist activities never came from our community, but came from outside, all by outside influence. Our masajid, our a'imma, our leadership cared for the country, protected the community, and protected the country. But you have to have a voice. You have to have a power. And that's the power, brothers and sisters. When we are together, when we bring our organizations together, I'm on a mission to ask you and to ask every message in America to join the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations. This is our destiny. You may drag your feet for now, but you have no choice but to come together. We know the direction in this country is a little bit tricky, a little bit concerning, according to all experts, that if the bipartisan or the partisan and the polarized political situation, this country could be in danger. And we have to work to stabilize, to be the voices of reason, to be the voices of unity. Muslim community has an opportunity to do that. 2022 elections are very critical. In 2016, the U.S. Council of Muslim Organization launched the one million voter registration drive. And we have accomplished that. Because we are together. Because we are united. National and local organizations. We've got to do this again. We've got to stand up. We're going to be together. But brothers and sisters, as you know, we cannot function without the support. We have monumental task ahead of us. We have every country in chaos. We have to pressure our foreign policy decision makers that this route of chaotic policy has to stop. The bleeding has to stop. Hasn't it been the case that every year you have a new country to raise funds for? Hasn't it been every year we add more and more people need our help and assistance? From Bosnia to Somalia to Afghanistan to Palestine to Lebanon to Syria to Yemen to Libya. Nothing left. The Rohingya, Muslims in India, the Uyghurs in China. This bleeding hasn't stopped. The U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations, brothers and sisters, our job is to stop. Relief organizations' job is to help those in need, to work with the bleeding. Our job is to stop the bleeding. We can, we can pressure our Congress to change policies. We can ask our Congress to increase funding instead of the fistful of dollars that we send out. Our Congress can and will be able to pass hundreds of millions of dollars to help those who have been displaced. But this doesn't take wishful thinking. This takes united effort, united work. And the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations has the job, will do the job with your help. You may not have heard of it before. That's why we are on the road to share with you the state of our community. We are a community that we should be proud of ourselves. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an awesome task to share the most beautiful religion that Allah has given to mankind. If it is the final, it has to be the best. But we gotta work on it. We have to do it right. So brothers and sisters, we ask you to support the council so we can build the capacity to protect our community, to protect our children, 
to protect our places of worship, to protect our businesses and our people who work out there, and also to protect our people back home, to change those bad policies, these foreign policies that yielded nothing but destruction and bad image and animosity with America. We never had this before until that they wanted, according to General Wesley Clark, they want to destabilize and turn up upside down the Middle East. In 2019, today is 2022, I can only say it was true. It happened. Our turn now is to change it. We have an obligation. It's not a choice. Brothers and sisters, do your part. So when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know that I gave you this, and I ask you to be an element, an agent of unity, not of a division, and that you support our power to protect, to progress. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. May Allah help our ummah to get out of its weakness. May Allah guide those in power. If they don't want to be guided, may Allah remove them from us and protect this ummah. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik allahumma lana fi ma aafayt, wa qina bi rahmatika wa asrif anna sharra ma qadayt, innaka taqdi bil haqi wa la yudda alayt, innahu la ya'azzu man aadayt, wa la yadillu man waalayt, subhanaka rabbana tabarakta wa ta'alayt, Allahumma alhim lufusana taqwaaha, وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذا القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقوم الصالح